and welcome into the second report of the Billiken Sports Report. I'm Willie McKenna, joined with my co-host. Will Dicely. We're going to be bringing you all the biggest sports news from St. Louis University and also professional sports. But let's start out with the story of the week, which is the men's Billiken soccer team. The St. Louis University Billikens needed a win or a tie to claim a spot in next week's Atlantic 10 Conference Tournament. St. Louis rallied from two goals down with less than 20 minutes to go to post a 2-2 draw against Massachusetts last Sunday at Robert R. Herman Stadium. The Billikens, 8-6-3, with 5-3-1 in Atlantic 10 play, earned a spot in the Atlantic 10 Championship, which begins today, November 11th, in Charlotte, North Carolina. SLU's offensive charge continued when the equalizer was scored in the 80th minute on freshman Cito Sacieta's first career goal. After the Billikens battled back to tie the score, SLU sophomore keeper Mark Pius preserved the tie and perhaps the season for the Billikens in the first overtime session. Pius made a miraculous diving stop on what appeared to be a sure open net goal for UMass. In all, Pius made six saves for SLU. SLU is the defending A-10 champions, and they continue their impressive streak of A-10 tournament appearances, making this the program's sixth straight. The Billikens, who have, who have advanced to the event each year since joining the league in 2005, are this year's fifth seed, while Xavier, 8-6-3 and 5-4-0 and and in, in A-10 play, earns the sixth seed and will make its third appearance in the Atlantic 10 Championship. Andrea Beatty of, Will of women's Billikens volleyball team hit 522 to pace St. Louis past Fordham 25-20, 25-15, 26-28, 25-17 in the Atlantic 10 Conference volleyball action Sunday in Bronx, New York. The Billikens remain in a tie for second place in the league with a 10-3 mark and are 17-10 overall. The Billikens men's basketball team is off to a hot start in exhibition play starting their season off 2-0 with consecutive home wins against Cardinal Stritch and Nova Southeastern. Dwayne Evans scored 12 points on 6 of 9 shooting and collected a game-high 14 rebounds, and St. Louis pulled away late to register a 78-62 exhibition victory over Nova Southeastern last Saturday night at the Chaffetz Arena. The men's Billikens basketball team begins regular season play Thursday, November 12th, when they take on Austin PA Governors. Action begins at 7.30 at the Shea Fitz Arena. Other games coming up this week at the Shea Fitz are women's basketball versus Wisconsin at 5 o'clock on November 12th. The women's volleyball team takes on George Washington at the Shea Fitz Pavilion Friday, November 12th, as well at 2.30. Finally, the women have their second game of the regular season Sunday, November 14th, when they take on Morgan State at 2 o'clock. Obviously, Will, we have a lot of uh, sports action coming up this week. I know a lot of people are really excited about the Millikens, the Billikens <laughs> men's basketball season, and we will uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. But come back and join us when Will and I will talk a little bit about professional sports, and like I said, we'll talk about the Billiken men's basketball season and also what we expect out of the soccer team coming up here in championship play. We'll be right back. Back we can do like yeah you don't you don't have to worry about it because we're trying to break yeah a little bit like one more.
And welcome back into the Will and Will Sports Talk Roundtable here. Really we have a couple uh, really articles of discussion we want to talk about. Don't make a smile. Starting off with the NFL. That's not professional. Now, Will, uh, the, the Rams had their bye week this past week, which really came at a good time, halfway no, through the season. And uh, a perfect time, really, for Steven Jackson and those guys on the offensive line like Saffold and Smith. They can all kind <laughs> of recover, take a Let's week off, get a like couple days off of practice. Our, we're going to do that for our rest, commercials because they shoot continuously. But now they have a big Chris, task oh, at hand. Definitely. We've been talking about this game not really now. since no, uh, you know a couple weeks into the season, nice seeing that they were going to play the 49ers here off of that? the bye week. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big What's game that? for the Rams. There's no doubt about it. At San Francisco, go. Let's go ahead. Uh, give me your opinion yeah, just on the outtakes. importance of this game. I, this is the most important game of the Rams' entire season. It, it's got to be. This is going to be a defining point in in where the Rams go. It's going to say either they're going to, you know, win this game and you know, go out and make a playoff yeah, contention, make a playoff run, or they're going to lose okay. and they're going to they're going to slide down into a, into another you know, disappointing right. year. So, this, this, these guys. This is going to be a really good game, I believe. Um, it's going to be a really important game for the Rams. They're really going to need to be playing on edge. Bradford, Jackson, yeah, we're on the offense. Usually doesn't. Especially the defensive side's really got to have a good game, and this is a must-win for the Rams. Yep. Right. Uh, St. Louis comes into the bye week at four and four, which uh, I know we've said this numerous times. I know we said it on our show last week. Yeah. We said it on our radio yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. None of us could have predicted the Rams being four yeah, and four if you want coming to, out uh, coming definitely. out of the bye week and tied for first place with the Seattle Seahawks yeah, we in the every NFC week West. On Thursdays. The only reason that the Rams actually, Definitely. like if the playoffs were to Come start tomorrow, the Rams would be in the playoffs because they beat Seattle. Thank right, you. Yeah. But the reason that this uh, San Francisco game is so big, this is the first game that the Rams are going to be playing San Francisco this season. They still have one more game left about uh, against San Francisco, and that's back here in St. What Louis. music video? The Rams need to get out of this slum of losing on the road. Sam Bradford has been stellar at home. He's been one of the best quarterbacks in the league, really, at home in the red zone. Uh, he's been fantastic. But on the road, he's had some so-so performances. Oakland, he had uh, had an okay yeah, performance. Keep you, keep you and Detroit was probably be, the worst game of stuff. his young oh. career and the worst game on the season for the Rams with that 44-6 to six loss. <laughs> and uh, Tampa good. Bay, a little bit of a tough game for Sam Bradford as well. So he needs to play well on the road. This team is led by guys like Sam Bradford and Steven Jackson. I think that the key to this game against San Francisco is Steven good. Jackson. Yeah, it it has really to be, good. definitely. I mean, your running back is one of the most <laughs> I central help roles or like, key figures in your team uh, besides the quarterback. One, two, three, you know, composure. He's, he's really got to take a – he's a veteran. Was, he's one of those was one long-standing two, veterans. Yeah. So <laughs> he's really got to – you know, said take the like, initiative, sorry, one, two, three, complete. Oh, yeah, take Curtis, the weight on his shoulders and uh, have a good game. I mean, like it's, it's going to rely on Bradford. Yeah. It's going to rely on Steven Jackson, then, definitely. Uh, now, and San Francisco maybe, has maybe been a very a average like team at defending the run like, this season. But I look for Steven Jackson to have some pretty big games this week. He's coming off of the bye, like yeah, you said yeah. earlier. Like, here's what I was he, saying, uh, like, he didn't have like a real a great performance thing. against and Carolina and just like, in the like, last little, game that yeah. they had at home. Yeah, the yeah, Rams went on to win, three, win that one. But, uh, you got to uh, take into account that seven. he was playing with uh, I think know, it, pins in his fingers. Right, I was just going to say that. Catching the ball with one hand, so, I mean, it's not a very good game for him, but considering his standards and his condition, it was it was still okay for him so far. So Right, so if Steven Jackson can come out with a big game, oh, nice. put up some big games out there. Yeah. I think that the Rams can sail to victory in this no, one. I mean, no, no, Will no, and no. I were just talking uh, right before the show. Maybe would be we were watching what the ESPN be analysts have to say about this one. Yeah. They're saying that the 49ers are 71% no, like favorites to win this to win this game. But I, just need, yeah, that's I understand why the 49ers are being picked for this because of the really, performances oh, uh, that the Rams get, have had on the okay, road this season. Um, go ahead and tell me what you think the outcome of this game will be. Uh, just a little bit of predictions here. Honestly, I think the Rams are okay, going to win this game. I don't see any reason why they shouldn't. Now, it's granted, they are in San Francisco, and the Rams aren't playing that well at away. But the San Francisco is not playing well at all. I mean, looking at the records, there are two and six records. Well, so if I can get it on my computer, um, I can just Rams are four and four. Right they got to play better on the road. But it's just it's going to rely with Stephen Stephen Jackson and Sam Bradford again, like like we said earlier. But I'm predicting the win. I don't see any reason why the Rams shouldn't be able to pull this game out. Right, and the experts are saying, like we uh, just said, that the 49ers 
do we're that. going to pull this one out Don't and lie. I think Will and I both agree Shit, that uh, I think that the Rams are kind of going to come out with a strong performance. I think what they needed was they needed that bye week to rest yep. up. They've had two weeks now to prepare for this 49ers game. Steve Spagnuolo is one of the best coaches at keeping his team focused we on do. the game at hand. And yep. yeah, you want to look at the Nothing. big pit picture in the long run of the season, but you need to keep your team focused on the game coming up at hand. And Steve Spagnolo is great That's at that. Fine. I think the defense is going to come out. They're going to play again. very yeah, strong, strong, I think, in San Francisco. I think that they're going to continue Preview. playing well against the run, not allowing more than 100 yards, I don't think, against the San Francisco 49ers. Now, Let's talk a little bit about how the Rams oh, really? are tied for first little, place uh, right now. And this will take us back to last Sunday's uh, performance of, uh, of the bit. other NFC West teams. San Francisco, yeah. bye week. That, so that is, that is a little a, bit of a worry a, as well for the yeah, Rams because San Francisco bit. did have a bye week. And, uh, you know, they, they've had Holy just as much time shit, now as the Rams have had to prepare and rest up. So that is a little – you would preferably not – want them to be coming off the bye week. But no, no, I mean, any team you play is, is no! hard to come off the bye week, but, you know, I mean, I think the Rams are going to have, you know, better preparation, they're going to come through, and they've, they've looked at the films, and they've, you know, they've, Spagnuolo's been, you know, telling them what to look for and everything, so they're going to be ready to go, I think they're going to be, be good to go on Sunday, so. And they know that if they want to make the playoffs, they have to win games oh. on the road. Definitely. They I mean, have to win any, games. Any on the good road. team that you that's that you so you have is going to be defined by if you can right you know now. get victories on the road away from your home stadium. So they got to be more consistent on the road. Good, and I think San Francisco overtime, this, this week is where they're going to do it. All right. Now, like I was saying, I got a little <laughs> sidetrack there. But let's look at the uh, the we Seattle Seahawks. So they played the New York game. Giants this past yeah. week. Will's a bit of a Giants fan over here. Um, Seattle got hey, Cole, absolutely back, creamed Cole, against the Giants, which is great now, news for Rams Cole, fans because with that loss, Rams. that puts Seattle oh, she, at four oh, and four as well, and that game. puts the Rams into a first place right, tie for the NFC yeah. West it's division. Like so, Will, tell us Ooh, a little bit about this uh, Seattle and New York game. Well, first of all, I want to say I was I was kind of pleased that the Giants were able to win in such considerable fashion, 41 sevens pretty good scoreline to win by. Uh, second of all, I'm even happier because, you know, like Will said, it put uh, the Rams Shit. in a tie for first place. It, uh, the loss was very significant to the Rams in, uh, you know, getting their, uh, more, making a playoff run Showing and the road. Uh, putting uh, the Seahawks down one game. So, I mean, it was good to see that and it was it's good for the Rams to have, a, uh, to have a little bit of slight advantage Yacobo. going into their bye oh, week and uh, coming in and uh, coming in and playing San Francisco and again. So. the Blues right now have enough Right, so a, a very clock. big game last week. And another big game that we saw was the Arizona game. Arizona oh, yeah. losing <laughs> in overtime to the Minnesota Vikings. And, Just a uh, fantastic game. I mean, I was watching that game. I think it was 21-10 and Arizona was up. That's and I was good. going, oh, man, this so is bad for the Rams. Still. You know, if, if the there, Cardinals there win this game, and they're going to be in the same record as the Rams this, are, that, and it's like, not going to be good. NHL but watching that game, Vikings really just pulled it out. I mean, they, they, they really they did. And really, the Vikings, that was very surprising. The Vikings from, have been point. one of the biggest disappointments in the league right next to the Definitely, Dallas Cowboys yeah. this yeah. season, which we'll get into the Cowboys later. I'm sure many of you know about the the turmoil that's going on in Dallas right now. What is it going on I'm sorry to all you Cowboys fans out there. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that that was huge for Arizona to lose that one because Arizona now falls to three and five on the season, and the only two trailing them are the San Francisco 49ers at two and six in the division. So now that Arizona's three and five, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. They're they're in both the nobody in this division is out of it by no. any stretch of the imagination. By all means, you can you can go with uh, for a playoff berth with 7-9 victory, or 7-9 record. So, I mean, by no means are the Cardinals out of it. Now, I think they're slipping away as far as the, uh, as far as the standings go. I think it's going to be the Rams and the Seahawks leading the division up until the last day. So, I mean, Cardinals unfortunate to see, you know, them have them lost like that. But And I, I honestly think that the Rams have the most talent in this league, I mean in this division, not in the league, <laughs> uh, not in this division. I think Seattle is a close Seattle. tie with them. I think that the way the standings per, are performed right now, 
uh, the way that they look is basically ranked on the uh, the talent level of these teams right now. I think Seattle and St. Louis are very evenly matched teams, and that's why I'm so excited that Seattle and St. Louis are going to be playing each other on the last day of the season. Huge game. I've said this a couple weeks in a row now. I think that this division could come down to the very last day of the season at Quest Field in Seattle. And that's yeah. definitely Quite. something to be looking forward to. Definitely. That would be fantastic uh, we're gonna to do, see if they can we're come start with NFL. like that. I'm, I would hope then the Rams would be able break. to clinch it beforehand, but it would be one heck of a game if yeah, that would happen. Either way, you then have to hold your hit, uh, head high as a Rams fan, oh, yeah. knowing that you went 1-15 we'll, last we'll season. And, then, yeah, and, and then you're in a great rebuilding process right now. You have a lot of really good talent out there, and they're building this team the right way. They have great veteran leadership, great Great young talent, and this team is just moving in the right direction. So Rams fans dun, dun, have dun, a dun, lot dun, to be dun, proud of this dun, season, dun, and the Rams dun, team dun, themselves dun, have a lot to be proud of. So every Rams fan needs to hey, thanks for helping with the tie-in. Yeah, yeah, appreciate it. And be happy with this season, whether Thank they make you. the playoffs or not. Obviously, a playoff yeah, right. would be the best turnaround yeah. ever to a one in fifteen season last year. So <laughs> lucky, lucky, yeah, there's lucky, nothing lucky to be enough. you know to be shameful about this season. I mean, we got good draft picks for Sam Bradford and Saffold. And we got Steven Jackson again, who's always going to be consistent for like, a couple more years. <laughs> Circle so, like, the entire yeah, team. Yeah, like you said, yeah. we're in a rebuilding process, and it's, it, it takes some time, especially after the horrible season last year. But we'll get back up to the. Are you a hockey standpoint. fan, man? And I know some of the criticisms for the Rams the past five years, five or six years, have really yeah. been the draft picks. Yeah, There's been some it. real, uh, real bomb watching. draft picks the past no, few years. Like, Looking care. back, guys like Alex Barron, uh, Ty Hill, yeah. some of these guys that Ready none when you of them are. are really on the team anymore, these top draft picks. And that's been the, the biggest knock on the Rams. And that's why this oh, rebuilding yeah. process has been yeah. taking so long. But one. now they have the right management, that the right one. ownership in Stan Cross, yeah. yeah. making these decisions. <laughs> and I look for another. This, this past draft was one of the best drafts the Rams have had. Oh, by far. Probably since they drafted uh, Tory Holt and, yeah. and Orlando Pace, guys we'll like that. Bulldog. Probably the best draft since then. So right. I think that we can look forward to another great draft as a Oh, oh you're oh, baby. Probably about oh, shut draft down. Maybe, uh, 12, oh, 13, I would say. Right. Uh, pretty mid line there in the, in the I league. Like we need to get uh, and I think that the Rams ownership is going to go out and they're going to make some moves and bring in maybe some veteran guys, yeah. make some trades, really make this a, a better Let's team see next this. season. Exactly. Seeing how well they performed oh, this they, year the with the oh. little experience and little video. Talent, I was like, what? Uh, their little uh, performed talent. Yeah, I think the Rams have so much potential. So, I mean, if you look at he's you like, oh, shoot, I forgot about this guy. They have so much potential in their play and what they're able to do. Idiot. I just I see nowhere to go except for up. I mean, we, we can't get any worse than 1-15. Well, 0-16, but... Yeah, you could pull a Detroit Lions and go 0-16 oh, in a season, honestly, but I don't think that's happening. Honestly, I don't see that happening. I see no. only, you know, room for improvement, room Imagine. for growth for Bradford and all the young players that we have on the squad and everything, so... I'm really looking forward. As a Rams fan, I'm pretty excited for that. I think anytime you have a guy like Sam Bradford on your team, you're in a pretty yeah, good like, position. To, definitely. To go back. Yeah. Joining, yeah. Us, yeah. joining yeah. us now yeah. is yeah. Mark Zinn. Yeah. He's still a rookie. He's yeah. still oh, yeah. a six, but he's not playing oh, like a you know, rookie. And he's, he's making good decisions. He's putting up fantastic oh, numbers so far. So right. And, and you strengthen that wide receiving core, bring in some wide receivers. Yeah, you, yeah, you could really start bring lighting up the Denario Alexander right. back and get our receiving core up to strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. And even, even yeah. looking past this season, you go out in the free agent market, pick up some bigger name wide receivers. Uh, yeah, I guess I, Bradford could be uh, yeah, was going to end up in the likes of Tom Brady and Peyton Manning in the next few it, years. It's it's I, I know it's definitely possible. Ahead, if we can get, uh, you know, nab a big, you know, veteran uh, receiver, a big threat downfield, we, we can put up pretty some good great good. numbers. I mean, you ha you have to look at what he's done this season oh, with the talent he's had. You know, these guys, these wide receivers on this team right now, outside of St. Louis and even inside St. Louis, guys, people don't know these guys' names. No, Laurent Robinson. Uh, Denario Alexander maybe a little bit because he was yeah. such a great college player. Uh, Brandon Gibson, Danny Amendola. These are not big-name wide receivers at all. And Bradford's been able to consistently put up about 200 yards, and not to mention he has 11 touchdowns on the season as well. <laughs> So and he's out for the season with a broken <laughs> shoulder. I'm really excited for the Rams. <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited, too. All right, let's move into uh, Dallas really quick. quick. Um, the whole fiasco, I guess, going down there. Complete Brad turmoil. Boys is my favorite um, shootout. Well, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, Wade Phillips yeah. was, was fired a few days ago. And uh, 
What, what do you think about? It? I mean, Dallas is going hopefully, nowhere fast. Hopefully, it won't I mean, lose the You pot. gotta look. I guess from a management standpoint and a coaching standpoint, like, okay, we're not. Oh, gonna yes. Win. How do? How, what did? What does Dallas need to do to really move I'm on? I'm sure they have Brad Boyd going next year and get the results that they need. Well, I think that they took a step in the right direction by firing Wade Phillips. I think Wade yeah. Phillips is a. He's an average NFL coach. He's yeah. he's not a bad coach. I think he lost control of that team, though. He lost control of that locker room, and I think a lot of people started losing faith in, uh, in what he was putting out there each and every week on the field. And I think that that's one of the problems uh, with the turmoil that's been going on in Dallas. Dallas that's so easy for him. Anymore. With no. the amount of money that Jerry Jones throws into that team. <laughs> that he I mean, created, really, he's just like, whoop, whoop. Yeah, he <laughs> Rips wrist no shots straight. He's like, whoop, bam. Next it's like, was was like nothing. Yeah. He was like, I'm done. As far as Tony but Romo still. goes, I mean, you know, he's coming off that uh, big shoulder injury. He's out <laughs> six to eight weeks. But, I mean, he's got to really come back three next goals, season. Three goals, three shots, if he 100% doesn't come back this season, season. He's really got to put up the numbers. I mean, otherwise, I, I think he's oh, he lost, lost here in Dallas. I think I, I agree. Um, maybe a possible oh, release or trade. You know, for some big draft picks, um, Kitten is not really doing anything in Dallas. Uh, and you know, the thing is, you can't expect too much out of Kitten. But my no. main knock on this is Why don't the Dallas they Cowboys like are basically built game. every season to go to a Super Bowl. That's what yeah. Dallas wants. They've been predicted to, you know, make the NFC Championship or win the Super Bowl for like the past two or two, three, four years. Right. Or something and like that. you don't win a Super Bowl with a backup like John Kitten. No, you, you can't. I mean, and, and that—that's my biggest I, knock on the team. Is this team the depth on this team was? not well prepared. They built this team around. What a great Romo glove save! Wow. Yeah. And and they didn't prepare for him Ooh. to get injured, which I don't understand that move because he's been not real injured prone, I, yeah. but you know, he's had his injuries throughout his career, so I'm not oh. sure why you wouldn't at least build oh, a decent quarterback barely. back there, because you know Snapped. he's probably going to have to come in and take some snaps at some point throughout the year. Exactly, and I think they, Pressure like you said, so they built the organization around Tony Romo. And my problem with it is, oh. honestly, I think Tony Romo is just an overrated quarterback. They, you know, I mean, he, they have a bad game. He throws interceptions. Well, they blame it all on Tony Romo and all on the coaching staff. Well, I'm not really seeing any support from the offensive line, any support from the receiving core, any of that. So, I mean, it's unfortunate to see that Romo and, and the coaching staff take most you of the You better not puke. And their big losses come. So, it's really going to come from a manager's mm. standpoint. Jerry Jones, I think, did take the right step in the right direction. By oh, a great save! He's going to make some crucial management decisions like, in the future. Yeah, good. Really some personnel good. changes if they want to change good. anything. So. Right, and even though we're talking uh, right. Tony Romo is maybe being an overrated quarterback, he does have Patrick 11 Bergen, touchdowns on the season, uh, and they were ranked fourth in the league yeah. uh, in passing yards. So they, he's yeah. been putting up some pretty good numbers, but it's just not going to cut it with one win in Dallas. No, that, that just That's, that doesn't cut it. I mean, Dallas has been pretty consistent for the past hook up, few years, and hook so they, up. they expect uh, a better team and a better season. Ah! Oh. Yeah. Tried to dangle right. him. And the Dallas Cowboys do it. sit at the bottom of that division, looking up at the New York Giants, who have had a pretty good season. They have had a fantastic season. Will and I are going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk a little bit about Blues hockey. The, the red hot start that these Blues have been off to could be on the downfall right now. We'll talk about Stanley Cup chances and a possible breakdown here in St. Louis for the Blues. We'll also talk a little bit of NBA and we'll get a little bit of Billiken Sports coming in. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Fuck. Back we can do like... Yeah, you don't, you don't have to worry about it.
And welcome back, everyone, to this edition of the Billiken Sports Report. We're joined with uh, the incomparable Mark J. Zinn. Thank you. Either way, to be as, here. Yeah, nice to have you on the show. And, and Will, I think it's your birthday, Mark. Is it, Will? It is. Well, here at the Midtown Studios, we've got your little present. Peabody coal, uh, stress coal. Holy cow. Peabody energy stress coal. God, <laughs> oh, thank you, just, you so much. Hey, no problem. Really no problem. Yeah, stress true. coal. We, yeah, I, I really appreciate that. Sure. Th thank you for, uh, for the birthday wishes. Bull crap. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk a little bit of blues. Uh, Mr. Mr. <laughs> Zinn over what? here is a pretty big blues fan himself. Uh, aren't you? I'm a big loose man. I'm a big uh, fan of the, the PA announcer there. But so we're moving on. Calhoun, uh, All right. I'm going to call Mark. He's a really good Joe? Joe? I, forget the, uh, I forget, but he's a great PA announcer. You he's know? good stuff. He's yeah. good. He's good. Good stuff. Well, the Blues uh, tonight had a, had a tough game. They lost to Nashville uh, Thursday night in the shootout. Really a tough one. And yesterday they lost to the Columbus Blue Jackets 8-1. to one. And they lost T.J. Oshie for three months of the season out with a broken ankle. Uh, Will, what is this going to do to the Blues' morale? Hey, Mark, I, you're, honestly, you're still it's welcome not, to come it's, on by Apparently it's not good to. for the Blues. I mean, Oshie was a fantastic player. You know, he's really put a lot of intensity into the game and everything. So losing him for such a considerable amount is, is very devastating to the Blues. So it's going to be hard for them to, to get okay. bounced back, I guess. But... Uh, I think they're they'll be okay All right, I'll see in the you. long run, hopefully. So, I mean, uh, talking about the game too, eight one. We'll just start. Not, not, I, not their best not the game best of the game, season. No. No. Mark, Mark, what do you what do you have <laughs> to say about the Blues this season you know, so I, far? We just we just got to cross our fingers at this point. Thanks, Will. Just really, uh, yeah, except my you gotta go out there, yes, you, you especially gotta go out there, about you got to score goals and you got to win some games. Maybe yeah. I think what would be really good Shut for the Blues would maybe in the pregame show. I mean, in the pregame in the locker room, maybe <laughs> Dude, yeah, 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 Neil Diamond. Yeah, yeah, Neil Diamond. Yeah, 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 um, absolutely. Now, now, we know Mark is a pretty big Neil Diamond fan. He likes ow, his oldies. Ow, I think ow, he wanted to do a little ow, karaoke this evening. Ow, 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 you know, it, it's ow, up to you. I mean, I'm just... Neil Diamond should he, he deserves to be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah. Sadly, to this point, he's not. We're the rock advertising. Hall of fame. But we, it's a chance. Uh, he We're got nominated, it. so I, I'm pretty I sure he will be. If not, uh, it's like nobody's worked on TV before. The Rock and Roll Museum in Cleveland. I'd say that there. <laughs> Let's hope not. Yeah, yeah, he might. Yeah, it's uh, he'll be in there, and so. Uh, <laughs> I'll bring you some live updates from Monday's Midtown when we go down. I'm going to be going down to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction yes. ceremony in New York on March 14th. I'll be there. Holy cow! That's that's that nice. sounds that's like a that sounds like. How about how about you? Uh, how about you give us a little Shots rendition of your favorite Neil Diamond song? Oh God! No. Okay, I'm sorry. No, um, yeah. You know, I had a lot more energy thinking Neil Diamond when I came in here. I don't know if I. Uh, I mean, I like Shiloh a lot, but uh, you know, why don't you guys talk about something I'll think about? All right, yeah, you right, think about that. We'll have, we'll have you take yeah. us out. Take us yeah, through the, pre take, yeah, through yeah, the credits yeah. with the with that song. Definitely. But yeah, back to the Blues. Really tough last night, and I there's been Stanley Cup talk so far this season on the Blues. Yeah, by no means are the Blues out of this. I mean, there's there's no reason to you know, panic. Right, and, yeah, we can't panic, panic yet. They yeah. still have 21 points. Exactly. In the you know, they're nine, tied for two, first. and three overall. Oh my God. That's I mean, not they too bad. they have a lot of a lot of potential this season. Why Obviously, the loss of T.J. Oshie is going to be uh, yeah, yeah. a big it's loss. It's always them. a big loss when you lose such an impact player. They're like that, they're so. tied for first place still oh, in yeah. the in the Central Division, which is by far the toughest division in hockey this Definitely, season. Definitely, yeah. You What's have that? Detroit, What's Columbus, and Chicago, and Nashville. All of those teams are most likely going to finish over 500. And there's a good chance that every team in the Central could be in the playoffs this season. Definitely, definitely. So, I mean, there's no reason that, you know, panic hit the panic button yet for the Blues. I mean, losing, losing Oshie is pretty big, but uh, it's nothing to be worried about so far. Like you said, we're still in first place. And, Shut up. Uh, you know, we've still got a good number of squad players. You don't know what you're this. talking about. Right. So everybody keeps, keeps And the Rams are more in this race than uh, the 49ers are. We've had a couple are. tough games here. So don't here. give me the, you know, the Even though tonight they lost in the shootout, the you still get that point in the standings. Yeah, much needed point. Much needed point. The they they like raised the that up to 21 points now in the standings. Very much at the top of the, still at the top of the NHL. Um... <laughs> the goaltending is gonna be there. The lock's gonna, the lock's gonna be there. Conklin's gonna be there. They're, the they're, the they're gonna be there this and season. They have Troy uh, Smith now let's talk a little bit low. about the Billiken Whoops. sports. <laughs> we uh, we had the the St. Louis soccer team uh, yeah. in One, the A10 two, three, championship three. play. <laughs> they're they're having the first game in Charlotte, North Carolina. We don't have any results as to that Carol game yet. 
Hopefully, no, uh, we'll get updated no. on those, but we wish best of luck good, to the soccer team out there. Definitely. Also, Ben Welcome Men's back basketball into the starts Will tomorrow and Will night. Sports I will be there. The the call. I will have the call on KSU uh, Radio, so go ahead and check that out. Should be a great in. game against the NFL. Uh, I, I expect will, uh, a big Billiken win in front of a sold-out crowd, I'm sure. Who's your color commentator tomorrow? Color commentator tomorrow night, really, for Steven Jackson. I met him last night. I don't remember his name. I, right. I was trying it's to get Mark Zid uh, as know. my color commentator, but practice, sometimes, rest, you know, what you see, you know, guidelines. But now they have a <laughs> I was going to say, sometimes, yeah. sports sports anymore, sometimes we can't let Mark really on live sick, shows. No, That's yeah. why we right. pre-record this one. That's why yeah. Monday's yeah. in Midtown. And Monday's in Midtown, his show, which is on every Monday or Tuesday night. Catch it on demand on YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube, Facebook page, a great show. And I was on the last episode. We talked a little sports, had a pretty good Pretty good segment season. there. It's, so it's definitely go check out Mark's show on Mondays in, in Midtown. Will really, you want to wrap us up with a little bit of uh, of you know, NBA? Just and, you know, maybe your games to watch, the best games of the past week, and yeah, definitely. And then we'll have Mark take us out with a quick song. So uh, NBA's uh, action was pretty pretty intense so far. Um, Lakers uh, going winning their eighth game in a row, so an unbeaten record. Um, Kobe just having a fantastic night again. Everyone showing up for it. It's really good to see that. Um, the Heat really losing a uh, thriller in overtime, really. Um, uh, 116 to 114 to the uh, to the Jazz. Uh, unfortunate to see that happen, but which, uh, Heat are playing the Celtics tonight. Um, I know we said it on our show last year. We said it on our radio show. We'll None of us could have predicted the Rams the being four and four coming out of the bye week. And tied for first Indiana Pacers, fantastic game, shooting 21 for 22, I believe, throughout the second half. Just fantastic. It's really good. For any sort of team, um, yeah. uh, winning 144-116, uh, uh, it's a great win. Is so big. So, uh, this is the first game. All right, I think that's just going to be about. Uh, that's going to be about yeah. it for the sports talk segment of our show, and we're going to have uh, have Mark Zinn do what he does best, and he's going to he's going to sing a little Neil Diamond. He's going to go a little Neil Diamond. Do we need to uh, do we need to get this uh, stellar at home song? He's been one of the best quarterbacks in the uh, league really at home in the red zone. Uh, he's been fantastic, yeah. but on the road he's had some. So-so Hello. performances. Oakland one, had, uh, two, had an okay performance. Good. Good. I would like to thank my friends at Peabody and my friend Peabody friend Energy. My good friend, Make sure, uh, make sure you uh, check us out next week. Uh, Absolutely. And yeah, we're going to start getting yeah. these yeah. videos We'll get these up on Facebook and YouTube. Facebook and, YouTube and, uh, and YouTube, and you guys will get so to watch these over and over again. Definitely. Once again, we're on at 7 o'clock like every single night on Steven Jackson. Check, us, check me and Willie out on uh, Case Lou Sports, uh, 5.30 to 6.30 on Wednesdays. It has to Every be Wednesday, we'll be uh, talking a little bit of sports here and there. So oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Good good plug there. Will and I have a show, like he said, every Wednesday. Wednesday, 5.30 to 6.30, so definitely check that really out. Gotta, you, Just more you know, sports talk. Uh, to, and, uh, you know, keeping you updated on all the all the highlights from definitely. sports, professional, it's and billiking. Got any questions, don't be afraid to, you know, email us or, you know, give us a message. Don't, don't, be, a don't, don't be a stranger. We're, we're here for your answers and everything. All right, and here we go. The long, I look for Steven Jackson. Here we go. The long-awaited moment of the night. Mark Zinn. Mark Zinn. Neil Performing forever in blue jeans by Neil Diamond. Performance against Carolina. In the last game that they had at Music home, company. the Rams went on to win that one. But uh, you got to take into account that he was playing with uh, Long intro. You know, pins in his fingers. Right. right. I, I was just gonna say He's that. catching the ball with one hand. So I mean, it's not a very good game. Not for enough. Very good. His, uh, Stand up. Forget the vision. It was still okay. For him. It was all I don't need the lyrics. Right, so it's it's Jackson right. come out with a big How you doing game. back there, Matt? Put up some big games out there. All right. I think that the Rams can sail the victory in this one. It's just, just like you're at a bar at Hessler's. Money talks. But it don't sing and dance and it don't walk. As long as I can have you here with me, I'd much rather be forever in blue jeans. Yeah. Great way to end the show. And hot is sweet. Honestly, I think the Rams are going to next to baby's green. And if you pardon me, I'd like to say, okay, whatever I'm doing, yeah. Maybe tonight, feel free to edit this part. <laughs> 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 no, 
Watching this week's edition of the Billiken Sports Report. We'll be back next week with an even. Well, I don't know if we can top that show. Yeah, I don't but, know if we can top uh, that. We'll do our best. We'll so, do our uh, best to maybe get Mark on another show. Get a little bit of a uh, uh, little bit of life karaoke, yeah, maybe. Definitely. But great show tonight. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you each and every night on Slu TV. Definitely. And we'll be back with a new episode next Thursday. All right. Later. Thanks for watching.